What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be tackling the water heater. Um, we are gonna re be replacing the anode rod. So uh, I'll explain as I go. So we'll open up here. So this is the water heater, this is the back side of it. Um, you got a couple things that you should know about. Um, number one, the control board is this piece right here. Uh, this is your pressure relief valve, uh, your burner. So that tube right there goes in to the water heater and creates a flame. When you're on propane, that's what heats up the water. Um, that is the igniter for it, that wire that comes up to the control board. Um, that is your ECO thermostat. Um, it's just a little piece of foam with a bunch of wire connections on it. Um, that I have replaced as well. I've replaced all of these parts so far um, because we were left stranded in Wyoming. So um, I've already replaced them. Today we're just gonna be tackling the anode rod, which is this guy right here, that bolt right in front of you, um, that is usually the, just a drain plug for the water heater. So the actual tank is behind this black box. Um, it sits behind it. Um, we use an anode rod and it, basically what it is is a rod made out of some metal material that screws into the tank. And what normally um, would be eating away at the inside of your metal tank that holds the water will eat away at the anode rod instead. So you just gotta replace it you know maybe once a year um, for us living full-time I would try to replace it every six months or so um, and then again it depends on how bad the water is um, wherever you're staying or how bad it's been so I'm going to take this off real quick I already have the part I need last time I ordered it I got two of them so that I had a backup for this kind of issue um, we're not having any issues with it just want to change it this is the actual part number for it. it's an Atwood water heater anode rod um, I don't really see a part number on there. Two piece, I think that B number right there. So it's a four and a quarter inch length and half inch um, diameter. Uh, if you don't know which size you're gonna need on the inside of your water heater, even if it is not an Atwood, which this one is, it will have a model number and a serial number right there. So just take a look at that. It tells you a lot about the, the water heater as well. Um, you see mine says GC10A-4E. So it's a gas combination, 10 gallon um, and electric. So we're gonna get taking this apart. I already have the new one set up here. Came, comes with Teflon tape. So this is all it is. Uh, you just unscrew the old one. Make sure the water heater is off and unscrew it. So I'm gonna get to that. It's a seven eighths inch socket and I'll be right back. All right. so. When you pull that, this is what's gonna happen. All the water from the tank is gonna be rushing out. Um, I was not really prepared. I was using one hand trying to hold the camera and take it out at the same time. And there's a lot of pressure in it, and it actually popped the entire rod out and shot it over here into the grass. So I'll take a look at this one and see what it looks like. So you can see the difference. So that's the old one. My camera will focus. So that one has been in about not even six months I would say by now versus the new one right here so quite a bit of difference you can imagine if you didn't have this in and you just use the drain plug which is that little plug right there that white one um, your tank would be looking like that so I always recommend um, whenever you get an RV of any type especially straight from the factory take that out take the plug out and just put an anode rod in. Start, start with the best. Um, don't let yourself get into a pickle with a bad tank that's leaking on the inside of your trailer and now you're kind of dealing with that issue. All right, so I got the new one in. Um, I did turn off the water um, at the faucet and as well as the water heater switch inside. Uh, I wanna make sure both of those are off. If you don't turn off the water, um, it's just once you pull the old one out or the plug out, it's just gonna keep leaking from there. It's gonna continually try to fill that tank back up. Um, so kill the water for a second. It literally takes a minute um, to put the new one in. So I just grabbed a new one, put it in. Do remember though, when you're using Teflon tape, um, anything like, like this little guy right here, um, wrap it on the threads of whatever you're trying to cover the opposite way that you would screw it in. So this is a regular um, thread pitch, so righty tighty, lefty loosey kind of thing. Um, so I'm gonna wrap when I wrapped the Teflon tape, I wrap it around the, to the left, like loose. 
So that way, as you're tightening it, it's actually tightening it with the bolt, if that makes any sense. So it's in, um, the water's back on. I will go flip the switch on in just a second. I dried up down here in the base as much as I could just to be able to check for leaks once it's back running. Um, and that's pretty much all there is to it, guys. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching our video. If you've not already, please hit that subscribe button now so you don't miss out on any future content. Uh, give this video a like, aka thumbs up, and you guys are the best. We'll see you later. I'm out.